like to thank everybody for coming out. My name is Marshall Kaufman from King's Promotions. And uh, we have a great event on Saturday night. In my opinion, it's probably going to be one of the best cards in PA history. All right, uh, from top to bottom. And I'm not just saying that because we have a great, I mean, a great main event that really, in my opinion, should be on national TV because of the type of fight that it is. But uh, I'm talking about the undercard alone. Just the undercard when you have undefeated guys at this level fighting each other means a lot. Uh, you know, Philly's known for a great fight town, great a lot of history in Philadelphia, and there's a lot of great fighters that come out of Philadelphia. And some of them get to a certain point and they taper off, you know. And what my goal is with uh, bringing up some of these guys, my goal is to be able to not only get them to that point, but also take them to the next level. And so that's why I presented this opportunity for this main event for these guys. So before I even get into that, there's young guys in Philly that had that opportunity as well, you know? And some of, them, some of them, like I said, they get to a certain level and they take you off. For whatever reason it may be, they have a team around them. Uh, girls. Girls, you know, they get lost in the streets, whatever the case may be, you know? So, uh, you know, we have, uh, there's a lot of great fighters that come out of Philadelphia. There's one that's sitting right over here, Tevin Farmer, you know, who's uh, looking for uh, an elimination bout coming up soon. So uh, and Tevin's come up the hard way as well. And there's a lot of Philly fighters that have done that. And, uh, and when I say just Philly fighters, the surrounding areas as well. You know, uh, there's a lot of fighters that come up out of Redden, New York, Lancaster, uh, right across the bridge in, 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 in New Jersey. So there's a lot of guys. Uh, I'm gonna introduce a trainer here in a minute because his fighters, for some reason, didn't make it today. But, uh, so we're gonna put the pressure on him. Uh, this man is probably one of the best trainers in the area. Uh, he's really uh, making a mark for himself. And uh, I see the passion that he has and I've seen that over the last couple of years since I've known him. And uh, it's with uh, great honor and respect to introduce Chino Rivas. Chino. Chino's the trainer for Anthony Bergen, who's the co-feature as well as Steven Ortiz. It's all yours, brother. I want to apologize. Uh, it's, my, it's my fault. Uh, Marsha informed me that uh, we had a press conference, but he's got back from Puerto Rico, but I had one of my guys in Puerto Rico, so I lose track of time. So Stevie was not informed, so I have to uh, take the responsibility to blame. Anthony Bergen works, so he couldn't make it. That's the only reason why he's not here. Um, but they're gonna come Saturday and they're gonna perform very well and in good shape, both of them. Um, I believe that uh, uh, Steven T is just like a special talent and this guy's the limit of what he could accomplish if he stays focused. Um, I think the Bergen had a little fallout, but you know, we get back to it. Um, he had a really good fight, uh, I believe it was like a month ago with him uh, Sparrow, which uh, was a very competitive fight. Uh, in my book, Nick the guy out of the way, he won, respect to him. And he could keep on moving forward. I think he won that fight as well. I mean, and he would have done the same thing. Um, but um, you know, uh, I'm just excited to get uh, get Anthony, especially after that loss back in the ring. So uh, Saturday is a good day for me. Uh, it's a very uh, it's a special kid. So uh, that's pretty much it. Thank you. All right. Uh Steven Ortiz, you know, I talked about some undefeated fighters fighting each other. You know, I love Chino. I love the fact that he's willing to take on, you know, a challenge. And, and he's, uh, Steven Ortiz is going up against a kid from Chicago who's 4-0 uh, named Tyrone Jones. And, you know, Steven Ortiz is 6-0. So you don't see those type of matchups in, at, this, at this level in a guy's career. So hats off to Chino for taking that type of fight, you know, and uh, it just goes to show how much he believes in Steven Ortiz. So uh, I had the opportunity to have Steven Ortiz fight on the last card. I thought he looked good. And uh, so I'm anxious to see what he does against this undefeated young man as well. So, uh, you know, once again, hats off to Chino. Uh, I also have a young uh, fighter on the card who 
who sells a ton of tickets. All right, I had them on my card at the Sugar House Casino back in May, and uh, and he uh, not May. It was actually before that. When was that, Brandon? Uh, March. Uh, in March, and he uh, they they tore the house down. I mean, it was it was fight of the night. It was non-stop. People were standing up, screaming, and I'm looking forward to the same thing again. Uh, so we have Brandon Robinson off to the right here. Brandon will be going up against Rafael Valenza uh, out of the DR. So uh, let's give it up for Brandon. And uh, uh, you got a few words to say, brother? Oh yeah. Um, I want to thank uh, Marshall Kaufman for having me. Uh, my name is Brandon Robinson. I am the best kept secret. I won't be a secret too much to keep putting me on all these cards, but you know, I'm just uh, appreciate my, uh, him for having me. I signed a contract and I got a job to do from June 24th, and I plan to uh, execute my job. And he's, he's a very good boxer and he loves the bang as well. So uh, for those of you who haven't got those tickets yet, make sure you come out. Because if you don't, if you miss this card, you're gonna miss something special. You know, and like I said, I, I really believe in my heart. Greg Serp sent me an email. The uh, Pennsylvania Athletic Commission uh, sent me an email telling me that he believes in his heart as well that this car would definitely be one of the best in Philly history. So uh, I'm looking forward to it. And, you know, it takes a lot of work from top to bottom. Fighters put in the time. They work hard in the gym. They're out there hustling tickets. And we're working hard trying to find the right fights, make the right fights that, that bring entertainment to the crowd. So uh, that's one thing that we try to do as well. Another uh, fight on the undercard is a uh, kid 122 pounds that I'm extremely excited about. He's a fighter that I have signed with King's Promotions. His name is Marcus Bates out of uh, the DC area. He's 6-0 with six knockouts. And you know, one thing I like to do is put my guys to the test. I don't like to put them over, I don't like to give them too much, but I like to put them to the test. And he's fighting a real tough, warrior uh, all the way from Mexico and uh, this kid is has upset a number of undefeated fighters uh, and his name is Roberto Pachetta and uh, so I'm really looking forward to that fight to see what my uh, young lion can do he's 122 pounder he's slick he can punch uh, he's been sparring with uh, the likes of Gary Russell and you know all those great DC fighters down there as well and the kid's are real deal and I think uh, we're going to see a great show on Saturday night when he, uh, when he boxes and bangs as well. Uh, also on the undercard is uh, Daryl Bunning, who's 3-1. and one. Uh, This fight, once again, fireworks. Daryl Bunning's 3-1 and one going, going up against Gary Clark from D.C., who's 2-1. and one. Uh, This kid, not Gary Clark, Greg Clark, forgive me. Uh, Greg Clark is wiry, he can punch, and uh, I'm looking forward to a great exciting fight uh, with that fight alone, you know. Daryl Bunny also has a fan base that he brings to the table. And so, uh, you know, I got the DC guys in the house as well. Uh, another uh, two guys I have on the card, a uh, young kid from Ohio named Chase Nelson. He had a real big amateur background. He's 5-1 and one as an amateur. Uh, he fought on my card as well. Uh, May 12th it was at the Sugar House. And he's going back up against the young kid as well that I have in Jordan Peters, who's 2-0. So you got a 5-1 guy going, against, going up against a 2-0 kid, and they fight at 126. So that's going to be fireworks, you know. Uh, they both love to bang. Uh, Chase Nelson's 5-1 with four KOs, and, and Jordan Peters is 2-0 with two knockouts. So uh, look forward to, you know, some great, exciting fights, guys. Uh, and then, then, then we move up to the local kid that I put on a couple cards here, you gotta love him, Jerome Conquest, all right? Jerome, uh, you know, always brings the fans out. Jerome loves the fight, period, you know? Uh, Jerome, sometimes you have to, Jerome's one of those type of athletes that you have to hold him back, I believe, you know? And that's why he has his trainers, Wade Hinnett, and, and you know, the Hinnett brothers who are great trainers, and uh, they make a great team. And then he has, uh, you know, Joe Han, who uh, looks out for him as well. And, and you know, if it's up to, Jerome, Jerome will fight King Kong, you know, and these guys got to hold him back and say, hold on, wait, it's not time yet, you know, so uh, Jerome's going up against a local kid here as well from Philly, uh, I hope I say this right, J-Ho Kim to the left of me down here, 
And so, uh, yeah. Dale Kim, you know, Jerome seven and two, Dale Kim six and three. How can you get better matchups than that, guys? You know, when you're putting these guys, they're, they're very competitive. It's going to be a great matchup. Uh, Jerome, any questions? The, the, the mic's yours, Jerome. And don't say you're, you're you don't have you're not much on words, but you talk. <laughs> no, no, but, uh, I, I just want to take the opportunity to thank uh, Mark Marshall again for, for putting me on um, another one of his cards. I mean, getting my name out there even more, even bigger, to a bigger stage. And uh, also, I want to thank uh, Joanne. I definitely want to thank my two coaches that's always with me, no matter where I'm at, where I go. Wade, Wade, and Randy Hennig. Uh, Saturday, just going to see, you know I mean, that the typical pain in the butt that I could be in the ring. And uh, that, that's all I think I can say. I don't know too much about my opponent. I really don't care. But the only thing I just know is he just got to deal with the crazy stuff that I do. All right. Thank you, Jay Ho Kim. I don't know much about him. I know that you know he has a good trainer with Zai. And, uh, you know, Zai says that they're here to fight. They're here to rumble, and they, they they're looking forward to this fight with Jerome Conquest, and, and they have a statement. They have a they want to make a statement. So, uh, Teo Kim, I don't know, does he speak English, Zai? Okay. Zai, you want to speak? You want, you want to say something for him? All right, Zai said he'll just see you at the fight. I don't know, on, phone, on the phone, he said a whole lot more than that. <laughs> <laughs> so I said he's going to shake things up in Philly. <laughs> uh, so uh, that, as, as I talked about Stephen Ortiz's fight uh, and the cold feature, like I said, we got a great cold feature as well. Great cold feature between Anthony Bergen, uh, who's ten and three, who uh, you know I think he, you know he lost to Avery Sparrow, who's in the house here. Uh, Avery fights on Tuesday on my card. Uh, I don't know where is. Avery might Avery's right there, okay. So uh, he lost to Avery Sparrow, which I was here for that fight, and it was a great fight, you know. Those two put put it on the line and it was a very close fight, you know, it could have went either way. And uh, so I think Anthony Bergen has to, you know, step up and, and, and make a name for himself again. And there's no easy task because when I once again when I called Chino, I said, look, what about fighting Victor Vasquez? Victor's a tough kid, man. Tough kid out of New York. Uh, Victor comes to Rumble. Uh, Victor signed the Kings promotions as well. And I know what Victor. I know what Victor does. I know what he's in for. Victor fought Jerome Conquest. Uh, Victor fought Carlos Rosario. Victor's fought you know, a couple other guys. And, and Victor comes to Rumble, you know. And so I think that fight is going to be very similar to the same type of fight as what Anthony had with Sparrow. I could be wrong, but. When you match up fights like this, normally you get great fights. And that's what boxing's about, guys. I mean, when we can put on great fights, you know, for the fans and, and get the best out of our fighters, that's what we want, you know. And it allows us to see what we have in that fighter. You know, there's no, uh, why waste your time on somebody that, you know, either they can fight or they can't fight, you know. I always love it when a guy says, yeah, I'll fight. Of course, you know especially from the promoter standpoint. When I used to train fighters, it was a little different, you know, but from the promoter standpoint, I love it when they say, yeah, I'll fight them, you know, because it's, it makes it much easier to put on a great fight it's for the fans. And what, what we need, we need the fans to continue coming back so we can continue to do these great shows. Um, I have Victor Vasquez right in back, right back of me. So uh, let's give it up for Victor. Victor, stand up. Uh, we train hard for this fight. We come prepared. I know he come prepared too. So we going to get all shout out to all the friends that come to us. Cool. Thank you. Victor loves to fight. I can I can tell you that, and there won't be much backing down from him. You know, uh, and I thank him because they drove all the way from New York uh, to come to this press conference. So I really appreciate it. Now on to the main event, guys. And, and let's face it, you don't, you're not going to see a main event of this caliber on any other show in Philadelphia except for a King's Promotions card. Period. You know, uh, 
when you have two guys of this level, of this caliber, great, great, great punchers, great punchers, okay, uh, and they're putting it on the line, you know, I would, I would love for this, this to be on national TV. You know, that's really where it should be. But we we want to have it right here in Philadelphia. Right in Philadelphia, you know. Uh, I have Ty Brunson, who's, you know, on a, on a, on a, on a win streak, on a two-fight uh, two win streak, three-fight win streak. You know, Kermit's been on a seven or eight-fight win streak. So uh, Kermit just recently moved up from 147 to 154. Kermit's rated number one by the USBA. For this man, when I told him about the fight, I said, how can you not take the fight? You have so much more to gain than you do lose, than you, than you have to lose. The winner of this fight moves up, I was told by the IBF, the winner of this fight will be moved up in the top 15 in the world by the IBF. How do you not take a fight like this, okay? Uh, Kermit's been there before, he's a two-time former world champion, okay? Ty Brunson has to take advantage of this opportunity. If not, he's just back to a club fight, okay? If, if, he, if he's victorious, he gets to move on to something bigger and better, okay? So uh, those are the opportunities that present themselves for somebody like Ty Brunson. Kermit, Kermit has, I think, has more to lose than Ty Brunson. If Kermit loses the fight, then Kermit really has to question himself and say, where do I go from here? You know? So, uh, it's, a, it's a crossroads fight. You know? Somebody said in an article today, uh, when they talked about it, they said, uh, you know, these guys are two guys that are really, you know, have been there, they, they made their mark, they, they fought, and they're still trying to make their mark. You know, like I said, Kermit's been there, Kermit wants to get back to a world title, I know Ty wants to be able to fight for a world title someday. So uh, the mic is Ty's. Let's give it up for Ty Brunson. All right, baby. First of all, I'd like to thank God for this opportunity. I'd like to thank Marshall for the opportunity. Thank you. And Kermit, too. Uh, I don't really got too much to say. I've worked seven weeks for this. Uh, I know Kermit is a two time world, world champion. And uh, if you remember, I sparred him up up in the poker nodes, I'll be ready for an IBF uh, title. I think he's the uh, main steward then. And uh, I felt that right hand. And I mean, I took it like a champ. And uh, I'm prepared for whatever he got to do Saturday. I'm very prepared. Like I said, I've been training seven weeks. Uh, and I got nothing to expect from me. So just look for a great show and look for a great win for me. And last but not least, I'm undefeated on King's, on King's cards. I'm undefeated. So I, I'll continue to keep that streak going. That's all. Now, as I introduced Kerm, you know, I told you he was a former two-time, two-time former world champion, and he's still making his mark. I've seen him in the gym. I've seen him box. I've seen what he's capable of doing, and I've seen what this man's capable of doing. In my opinion, his last performance was his best. You know what I mean? And so. You want to see these guys excel. You want to see them do great. They're both fine young men, and I say young because they're younger than me. Uh, but uh, you gotta give it up for them, you know. But it's my pleasure and honor, and I'm happy that these two guys are able to fight the junior middleweight state championship, okay? And I stand in Philly, and for them to take and put another strap around their waist, okay? means a lot. So it's my pleasure to introduce Kermit Sintron. Uh, glad I'm, that I'm here. Uh, thanks, Marshall, uh, for putting me on this card, giving me the opportunity to fight for the state title. Uh, it's something that um, since I started boxing, I, I, I wanted, um, and we, here we are. Um, but I want to thank uh, Tyrone for taking this this fight, uh, it's gonna be a great, it's gonna be a great fight. Um, I know he's a big puncher. I'm a big puncher. Um, I feel like I have a better chin. Um, I, I've been there where everybody, every, a big punch. I've been there where everybody, from Canelo to Paul Williams to 
don't know who else, man. I've been, been there. And uh, this is just another uh, fight for me. Just go out, go out there, and I'm just going to do the job that I'm supposed to be doing. Just go in and, and show my skills, uh, show them uh, that I am a better fighter, and uh, just come out of there victorious. Um, yeah, I'm well prepared for this fight. Uh, my trainer, Joe, uh, put me through hell in this camp. Um, we ran the motherfucker hill a couple <laughs> times that I hate. Um, but that hill is what got me to, uh, to a world title. And so we're going back to the, to, to the old roots. Um, so I, I don't have much to say. Just, uh, I'm just more preparing for the fans out there to just come out because uh, it's going to be a good night of fights. Thank you. Guys, it goes without, before we uh, go on with any questions or whatnot, I have to introduce, I have to introduce Joe Pastor, who's been with Kermit a very long time. He knows Kermit very well. And so, any questions for Joe? Joe, give him some something on what you see happening with Kermit and how he's, how he's doing. All right, Morris. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank everybody for coming out, Morris, for having us. I wrote for accepting the fight. I've actually been a fan of the following you since you started your crazy knockout streak. Um, Kermit's been there before, he's, he's, he's done the climb, he sat at the top, and now we're trying to get back up there. Um, I don't have anything disparaging to say against our opponent, I, I don't believe in that, and, and that's, that, that has a place in boxing. Everybody takes the same risks when they get in that ring, whether you're a four-round fighter or a world champion, you're putting your life on the line, and I have nothing but respect for Mr. Brunson and all the fighters here. Um, Tyrone has 21 knockouts, and that doesn't happen by accident. Um, you, you can't, good matchmaking doesn't make those kind of, that, that kind of record or, or knockout streak. We're well prepared for, for Tyrone. I think he's a fundamentally sound boxer. I think he's got good hand speed, and he can obviously punch. I believe in my guy. I just think he does everything a little better. And I think it, it comes down to when you have punchers in the ring, it's, it's who can take what the other can dish out. And I, I believe Kermit will be able to take it a little better and, and maintain through the course of the fight. Um, I think it's gonna be a great fight. You have 51 knockouts between the two of these guys. I think it's gonna start early. Uh, I'm, I'm confident Tyrone's gonna come out fast. This seems to be the way, he's, the way he fights. And, and we're gonna meet him head to head. And, and the best chin is gonna come out on top. So, Everybody come out, we're going to have a good night of uh, fights across the board from the bottom of the card to the top, and we look forward to seeing you all there. Thank you. we we'll have you guys, we'll do a face-off for you guys, and if there's any questions after that, feel free to ask questions. It's not in front of the camera. Zai, Zai. Zai, from the camera. I'm sorry. Easy. Questions for anybody, guys? 
My question is for Kermit. Is that a good weight for him? Kermit? Does he feel better now? Do you feel, Do you feel, feel better at 154? I feel better at 135. <laughs> <laughs> I made one for the seven, no problem. Uh, I'm not always getting any opportunities at one for the seven. Um, being that I'm ranked uh, higher at one fifty four, I you know I just asked Marshall just to give me a fight one fifty four. Um, you know, it happened to uh, to be uh, Tyrone Brunson. Uh, so uh, it's why I'm at one fifty four, because I'm higher higher in the rankings and I'm getting a better opportunity. You know, I spoke at Don Elbaum, he said, Wow, what a fight. Who's training this time? Vaughn Jackson. Fred? Vaughn. Vaughn Jackson. Oh, yeah. How, how do you feel uh, about better fighting at home? Uh, yes, sir. It's great. Sometimes. It's great to be fighting at home again. Right. Sometimes. How did it uh, pressure you not to fight at home? Well, Depends on who you are, I guess. Uh, I don't really got no pressure. No pressure. Okay. It's good. It's great. I look forward to two good guys. And I hate to say I'm hoping for a draw, so you both get my <laughs> Any other questions? Brandon, tell us about yourself. Where are you from? Oh, I'm from Upper Darby. Um, I always wanted to box. I just knew that I was going to go pro my son. I'm real athletic. And, you know, uh, just because I didn't finish school enough, so I just wanted to go pro Crystal. and box. So, give me a shot. You know, I'm just here to uh, do my job. I'm doing where do you train? Uh, 38 something Bay Boulevard, Delco Boxing Academy. Yeah. I came down from uh, my first fight was at Cruiserweight. I had laws against Mike Hill. And I won a pre fight, two knockout match. And I put my week down every fight. So this fight, uh, this is my second fight at Super Bowl. I plan to stay. So with, with that being said, how does it feel coming from Cruiserweight all the way down to Super Bowl? Do you feel a difference? Yeah, I feel a lot. I feel, I feel faster, but at the same time, I feel a lot stronger. Because at, at Cruiserweight, I was a little sluggish. So I feel like we're, I feel like we're uh, real strong at this point. Any questions? Wrong Who did you spar with getting ready to put you ready yourself for this? Always get ready. But this fight, it just it just transitioned over from my last fight because I fought uh, what, two, three weeks ago in Chicago. So it went from fighting and then went right back in. Well, I, I got right back. I got right back to sparring what that Monday. I fought that Friday and I was sparring that Monday when I had punches, finishing out his uh, training camp with him. So he get ready for this fight. And then uh, right after that, uh, the Cardo, the Cardo brothers. They helped me a lot. Frank, 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 the better experience, I, I, I fought the better positions, um, you know, and it, it'll show, it'll show on uh, Saturday night. Thank you. All right, guys. The, the weigh-in's Friday, Friday here at 6 o'clock.